Hey guys, it's been a while. Happy New Year, uh, happy holidays, whichever holidays you celebrate. Um, it's 2011, which means it's now it's time for me to go back, do a year-end roundup review of all the movies of 2010, just like I've done the last couple of years. Uh, yeah, 2009, 2008. Um, so I've got my list. Let's take a look, okay? Uh, January 2010, I saw Daybreakers. Uh, this one stars Sam Neill, Willem Dafoe, a couple other folks. Um, it's about vampires. It's a pseudo-future world where vampires have taken over and pretty much run the world. Um, industry and everything has shifted to vampire uh, industry. Humans are farmed, that kind of thing. Uh, really not a whole lot to this movie. It was pretty bad. A lot of money was spent on it, but... Uh, the only real reason to go see it um, is one line from Willem Dafoe that I'm not going to say here. You'll, if you ever see the movie, you'll know the line. Unless you see it on TV, in which they probably won't play that line. February saw The Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins. Um, interesting remake of the 1920s monster movie. It really was just a monster movie. It wasn't so much a horror movie. I think... They tried to appeal to the modern-day horror crowd because they threw in a lot of scenes that were pretty gory, especially, you know, one particular scene during the big car chase uh, through the city scene. Uh, well, big chase scene through the city, not necessarily the car. The scene in question involved, uh, I believe it was a trolley car. It's been a while. It's been since February since I saw it. Um... But yeah, I think they really tried too hard to appeal to the modern horror crowd by throwing in too much gore. Um, that's part of one of the problems I have with modern horror is, is there too much gore? And it really detracts from the story of this movie. Uh, okay. Speaking of modern horror, I also saw in February The Crazies. Um, Crazies is about a small town that just so happens to encounter this outbreak of some kind of virus that essentially makes people into zombies. It, it's it's an okay movie. Um, it's worth watching like if it's on TV but really it's just a standard zombie movie. They just change the you know the, the, the device I guess. They're not zombies. They're sick people but they're murderous sick people. So, I, it's kind of like uh, 28 Days, 28 Weeks Later, but not really. I'm not quite sure how to explain that. Uh, let's see, Shutter Island, Martin Scorsese's uh, new flick, starring Leo DiCaprio, actually has Ben Kingsley makes an appearance as the Doctor. It's it's pretty good. It's um, It definitely is a Scorsese film. It, you, you, you know, it has his pacing to it. It has his type of scenes his type of story uh, the the twist ending is one of those type of endings that I can't watch the movie again for a few years or else I'll remember everything about it so uh, it, it, it's definitely a, a very good movie definitely award worthy uh, if for nothing else just the cinematography of it I'd say check it out I don't know if it's a buy but it's definitely a watch. Let's say also saw in February, Kevin Smith's attempted foray into the action comedy, uh, Cop Out. It's it, it's a buddy cop flick starring Bruce Willis, Tracy Morgan, and it works, but it doesn't work. It's the standard buddy cop formula. It's kind of a lethal weapon type movie, and it's it's one that I would watch again if it was on television, but I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't rent. It's decent, it's not great. Uh, okay, March, we have Alice in Wonderland, starring Johnny Depp and... I am going to mess this woman's name up. Mia... <laughs> Wasikowska. Mia Wasikowska, I think? She played Alice. Um, Depp was a pretty good Mad Hatter. I mean, he was definitely mad. You definitely, you know, had the, the, the feeling that something was wrong in his head. Um, she, she played a perfect Alice. I think 
you yeah, couldn't have picked anyone better. They really couldn't have. She she had that innocence about her. You had a confidence. Um, I think what really lacked here was some of the story elements uh, and some of the stuff that detracted from the story, like Johnny Depp's break dancing kind of thing at the end, which really just didn't seem to fit. Um, visually, it's beautiful. And, and and I could see why they did it in 3D. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of the 3D movies. It takes me a long time to actually get my eyes to adjust. But I, I think the biggest thing, they tried too hard to create a villain in the Jabberwocky. They should have just stuck with Helena Bonham Carter as the queen. Um, the big head effect was kind of cool. They're also, Crispin Glover made uh, had a side role in this. So he, he actually, Crispin Glover actually showed up in two movies this this uh, March. He, he was also in Hot Tub Time Machine, which came out in the same month, uh, starring, you know, John Cusack, Craig Robinson. Um, there's an appearance by Chevy Chase. Uh, good movie, funny movie. Um, watch it with other people, because elsewise you might not laugh as hard. But it, it is definitely a funny movie. Um, not as good as The Hangover, um, but definitely better than a lot of the movies that came out over the last couple of years. So definitely give Hot Tub Time Machine a shot. Um, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy it, but I would definitely rent it again with friends. Uh, Clash of the Titans had Liam Neeson, uh, a couple other people, Ray Fiennes as Hades. Uh, I, this one was, again, another one made for 3D, so a lot of the effects looked like they were made for 3D. I saw it in regular 2D, you know, the way movies are, have been made for 100 years now. Um, I liked it. I really did. I liked the, 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 the visual styling of it. I thought the Kraken was kind of weird looking. Um, big, angry turtle looking thing, but ten with tentacles, I never quite figured out, you know, if he was supposed to be turtle or octopus or whatever. He was he was a giant creepy villain, that's that's for sure. And uh, the Medusa sequence is really cool. It definitely pays some good tribute to the old one. Uh, the, the Harryhausen Clash of the Titans. Uh, definitely check it out. It's again one I would rent, not buy. And uh, if you like 3D, check it out in 3D. If you're like me, it's just as good. Kick-Ass. Um, I, I had to rent this one later on in the year, but mostly because none of my friends really wanted to see it. Uh, and, well, it's definitely one for comic book fans, like me. Um, Nicolas Cage as Big Daddy. Uh, Could have done without him. Done, you know, which way or the other. Is, is his superhero persona, he acted too much like Batman, and his non-superhero persona, he acted a little too much like every other Nicolas Cage character. Um, let's see, uh, Christopher Mintz, Plassi, Plassi, uh, McLovin, <laughs> as the Red Mist, um, he, he was, he, he had a decent storyline, he, his was probably the best storyline of the whole film, so, for, for nothing else, he, he, he's worth watching it for. Uh, there was a chance for kind of a redemption story at the end, but they decided to go in another direction. Uh, I never read the books, so I can't say for sure how close it is. Um, <laughs> one thing I can say about this movie is I can't help but think of the 2010 Wizard Magazine Halloween Costume Contest um, because of a kick-ass that was in the costume contest, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, Date Night with Steve Carell, Tina Fey, and uh, Mark Wahlberg. Um, really funny movie. You don't actually have to be on a date to see this one, I'd say. Um, it, it's got action, it's got comedy, but it's all it all meshes rather well. It's it, it's a lot like. The, you know, the old comedy action movies of the 80s, but it definitely fits better in the modern times. Uh, definitely check this one out. This one is a maybe buy. It, it, I just, I don't know. I'm 50-50 I'm, I'm on buying rent. But definitely rent it. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> that moves us to May. And Iron Man 2. Um, what can you say? Gwyneth Paltrow, Robert Downey Jr., Sam Jackson, all return for the same roles. They're all just as good in those roles as they were in the first movie. Um, in this one we also had Don Cheadle taking over the role of Rhodey, uh, and who becomes War Machine in this movie. That's a good story, it really is. Uh, I, I liked this one, I liked the reference to Demon in a Bottle, the storyline from the books. Um, definitely a different take on it in the movie, but that's good, because it fits better with the movie story than, you know, probably would have if they tried to do it straight out. Um, Scarlett Johansson as uh, Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, uh, I like Scarlett Johansson. She does a great job. I'm not quite certain I like the way they're taking the character. Um, I did like the, the, the Rusman identity that they that, that S.H.I.E.L.D. puts her in um, because in the book she's a Russian, but Russian former Russian secret agent. Um, in this one she's not. But so I thought that was a good little nod to the books with the Rusman name. Uh, definitely a buy. Definitely buy this one. I got a special, you know, I, I got one from Target. It was like a metal steel case Blu-ray DVD combo uh, even though I, I don't need the DVD anymore I got Blu-ray I uh, bought it just for the steel case I love the steel case uh, June Grown Ups Adam Sandler Chris Rock Kevin James uh, David Spade Rob Schneider um, everything that was great about these guys my, minus Kevin James, obviously, but everything that was great about these guys in the 90s on SNL, I think, was perfectly reflected in this movie. It, it, and it doesn't feel like, you know, a rehashing of the old-style comedy. It definitely feels fresh and new and, and modern. And with the addition of Kevin James, it, it's got a little more slaps, slapstick to it, because obviously um, their slapstick element from their old SNL days, Chris Farley, is gone. Uh, Kevin James is perfect for that role. And I really think any, you know, I only had one friend that didn't like it, and I still can't figure out why, because he really liked all these guys in, in their old SNL days. He he thought it was nothing like the, their old SNL days. I thought it was perfect. So, I definitely would say buy it, you know, if you're, if you're a big comedy fan. I haven't bought it yet. Um... I probably will before the year's end, though. Waiting for the price to come down a little bit. It's definitely a buy, but don't buy it at like $20. Uh, definitely buy it when it's a lower price, like, you know, $10, $15, $5. Refresh yourself. It's intermission time. The concession stand is open and ready to serve you. 